What's up, Bingers? It's Jake. With it being October, scary movies and horror films are popping up everywhere. Now, we don't typically do scary stuff here on the channel because I'm black, so we tend to die in those movies if you hadn't noticed. Plus, clowns are also kind of scary. So that's why we're going to be talking about The Joker. One of the best Joker stories ever told is Batman the Killing Joke. So today, we're going to compare the comic to the animated movie. With that being said, I had to steal Joe's copy of The Killing Joke in order to do the comparison, so if you could not tell him, that'd be much appreciated. I will say this though, for a comic that came out in 1988, it was definitely ahead of its time in storytelling, and honestly, realizing it was the Joker's origin story just made it that much more interesting. I really like seeing how they portray the Joker struggling to survive in society, and, and being driven to do something that caused him to go mad. The story, in short, basically, is the Joker escapes from prison, and attacks Jim Gordon and his family to prove the point that everyone is literally one bad day from being him, including Batman. So, to start, the film received mixed reviews from fans and critics. Personally, I liked the film. They gave Barbara Gordon more screen time in order to give an emotional attachment to her character, and I think that's where people were a little bit disappointed because some just kind of wanted them to keep to the story, the original story, but I like the little extra they gave us on Barbara Gordon. Especially, even though I know what happens to her when she gets paralyzed, it was just a very good steady build up to make me care more about her. And even though some people had a problem with that, they did a good job with the comparison between the comic and the movie. They kept it pretty accurate with the dialogue on the back half of the movie. So you guys are going to have to forgive me. I'm about to go on a little bit of a rant here. But it's going to be good, so don't worry about that. Um... Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. So I did not realize how many animated shows uh, Kevin Conroy has played as Batman, and especially even in the Arkham games as well. He has played Batman for so long that I don't know how else Batman sounds like. <laughs> like, let's be honest here. And it's, it's, it's interesting because he's never, well, he has, but we don't talk about that. He's never really played Batman like dressing up in the costume and like in a in a real life movie like type setting, so it was always interesting to me. But still, at the same time, his voice is so well known in like the DC community as Batman, and it's even even though some other films don't really use his voice, it's just so cool that growing up, I think the earliest Batman show I saw was I think the Batman animated show is what it was called or something like that. But still, that's pretty cool. And Mark Hamill, honestly, it, it's weird because I, even when I hear Joker and I know he's the one behind the voice, I think of, like, the skinnier Mark Hamill. And it's just weird thinking that his skinny, scrawny self made that creepy and very sinister type Joker voice, you know, very unique in its own way. All right. So the Barbara Gordon slash Batgirl scenes. Again, I'd say this, I did like how they added her a little bit in the beginning. They gave her a bit more of almost not really an origin, but just some more reason to care for her. Like, especially for those who aren't comic readers or don't know about the Killing Joe comic itself. You know, just to give her that little bit extra, I felt like to that specific audience of those who don't read comics, it gave them that emotional edge. And I think that's why those are the people who liked the film, because they didn't really understand or know the comic before the movie. So... Seeing Barbara Gordon in her uh, costume and seeing what she does outside of the cowl and all these other things, it was just something interesting to see her do, especially with the comic already being intense itself. Adding just that little bit just made it a bit more interesting. It was kind of a good ramp up to when her and Joe encounter each other, she becomes paralyzed. Now, something that, that the fans didn't exactly like was the part where Batgirl and Batman have sex. And I had to think about it. It's, I, I don't agree with the fact that Batman did it. I don't feel that he should have, especially knowing that, you know, her emotional attachment with him started to grow. And I think he noticed that too a little bit, which is why he kind of tried to push her away a little bit from a certain mission that they were on together. But also the fact that both of them did have sex, it was kind of implied that something was going to happen between them, that whether it be a kiss or have sex or something like that was going to be implied. And how they did it, again, in my mind, was all right. But I'm not happy that he did it, that he did it. I felt Batman should have had more control. He should have been like, listen, this shouldn't happen. You're in an emotional state right now. We, we just shouldn't do this. Because that just makes the relationship worse between them. Because then, of course, it's awkward for a little bit between them. And then she eventually leaves the cow uh, behind. 
she basically stops being Batgirl and just gonna just try to be a normal person. But of course, we see what happens. We see Joker uses Batgirl to get to Batman, and then things escalate. All right. So now I'm gonna talk about the ending of Batman: The Killing Joke, comic versus the movie. So. I saw the movie first, and maybe that was my mistake, but when I saw the end of the movie, I was kind of just, like, content with it. I was just like, okay, I guess it's an ironic play of the killing joke. I guess it was just, I guess a joke was just the perfect ending, I guess. I I didn't really question it. The more I thought about it, I was thinking, this is kind of a, not the best ending of a DC animated film. I was kind of over something better, and I was just unsure what was going on. Then once I read the comic and then I looked up some stuff about the comic and the background of, you know, how they made it, apparently there's speculation about how it truly ended. So what leads up to this, before that moment where Batman and Joker are laughing together, Batman arrives at the uh, place where Joker set up and basically tortured Jim Gordon. Batman gets there, rescues Gordon. And as Batman's about to go and get Joker, Gordon's like, we got to do this by the book. We got to show him that our way works. And I'll explain the reason behind that later. But he says that we got to do this by the book. And and despite what he says, he's also, at the same time, thinking about what happened to Barbara Gordon. So it's really a decision, which was, I was thinking, okay, so if he kills Joker, you got to make a sequel to this. Like, this is just something completely different. And so I found out that at the end, you notice that when Joker and Batman are laughing, Batman puts his hand on Joker's shoulder and they're laughing together, like just ha 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 or whatever. So then camera just fades away. And instead of both Joker and Batman laughing, it's just Batman laughing. So the speculation whether or not that maybe Joker just stopped laughing or that Batman slowly suffocated the Joker, that's why it's only Bat- you only hear Batman's voice in the background. So when I heard that, that was a bit interesting. I was like, okay, okay, I, I don't mind that ending, but I would like, still would like a sequel. And I know there is a sequel to the comic, which, of course, I'm not going to get into because I have not done any research on that. But still at the same time, it is interesting because I would really like to know or hear what the creators thought when they were writing this. Like, what did they think when they did this? Did they intend for it to be like that? Did they intend that it was nothing serious? Or was it actually they the one who started this rumor and just was like, let's see what happens. Let's go with it after that. But still, very interesting ending. And now that I got some background, it's 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 impressive. I like it. So last thing I'm going to talk about is the message that the Joker was trying to instill in Jim Gordon. So I mentioned this before in the beginning. I mentioned this just in the last part I was talking about. The message, in short, that the Joker was trying to send to Jim was that everyone is one bad day from turning into him. It's a message that I've heard before in other films, but coming from the Joker, it's definitely something interesting, especially the the story and what, what all happened, because we see what Joker did trying to make Gordon believe that no one is worth saving, that, you know, there's a reason the Joker who is the way he is and that he tried to make Jim realize that and may and also even turn him into that as well. I want to compare this a little bit. I'm going to go off the rails a little bit. Uh, the Dark Knight. We saw that how Heath Ledger's Joker did this to Harvey Dent, how he basically, I remember him said, said he said specifically, he turned Gotham's White Knight and brought him down to his level basically into some not instead of being the person for the people now he's a person for his own self his own personal gain and his own loss and it was, it was an interesting story so i thought of that when i heard that message over and over again as i read it in the comic and i read it in or seen it in the uh the film as well but still very powerful message that joker tried to put out there and definitely something worth talking about i have to say i liked how both in the film and the movie, how even though sadly it was uh, Barbara who went, she was used in order to make Jim believe this, how even in the end, Jim still kept to his ways. He said he said to Batman when Batman showed up on the scene to we got to do this by the book, make him know that this is the way we got to do things. We got to do it right. It was still interesting because he, he stuck to his own convictions. It's something you don't see in a lot of people. Just hypothetically, if that was real life, I honestly think the person who would have control of the Joker's future would probably have something done to him, like beaten two inches of life, anything, something that along those lines. But still, it's interesting how he really stuck to his convictions in the end. All right, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this comparison of the book versus the movie on The Killing Joke. Putting out more videos, we'll let you know on our Instagram channel. Also, hit the subscribe button. And with that being said, stay nerdy, keep binging.